stories on Instagram. Now, we're not talking about scrolling through posts, but stories that you see on Instagram. Sometimes you'll see that there's some people that say, swipe up. That's not going to happen anymore because on Monday, you don't swipe up. It's going to be a link sticker. Oh. Not that big of a deal, but it's it's different. Instagram was testing, and they go, you know what? People are going to use the link sticker more than they will a swipe up. I can imagine that. I, sometimes I'll swipe up if I want uh, to, you know, if I see something that I like that I want to buy or I want to find out more about it or yeah. a recipe or whatever. So if there's a sticker there, it does make it a little easier. You tap on it and it'll yeah. open up the link or wherever it wants you to go. Right. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to swipe up to me, but I can see where someone that's not maybe as uh, used to using Instagram maybe not know what that means. Even though it's swipe up, it's like, what? Swipe what up? You know? You swipe up. Yeah, but eh, I'm just saying. I've seen people like, what does that mean? And then you've got to learn what the sticker is. True, but that to me is a little more present, so you're like, oh, okay. Click that. And tap. Yeah. Not click. You're not using your mouse Look. on your phone. No, but I say click. I, don't I say know tap. you do. Yeah. You tap the phone. You don't click the phone. I click the phone. I don't no, know you what tap you do on the that. phone. I no. tap the phone. Fine. I click the phone. She uses a mouse on her phone. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. If you're going to a wedding this weekend, you may want to make sure if you RSVP'd that you actually show up. Because this happened recently. Evidently, it was a, um, a destination wedding to Jamaica. And uh, people that showed up, it cost, and I mean, receptions for weddings are very expensive. This was somewhere in the neighborhood of $120 a piece just for the reception, which is really, to me, not as bad as it could have been. Um, these two people did not show up to the wedding. We don't know if they called and said we're sick. We don't know if they called and said, or they just skipped out completely. So what happened? They got an invoice for $240 because they didn't show up to the wedding. They got a bill from the bride and groom that said you owe us $240 because you didn't show up at the wedding after you RSVP'd and asked for the steak <laughs> or the fish or whatever it mm -hmm. was. I can't, I can't imagine sending somebody a bill. I mean, I know that. When you have a reception like that or a party. Or People aren't going to show. It just happens. It's going to happen. And, and especially now, you know, if you if you feel the slightest bad, you you know, a lot of people are saying, I just don't want to chance it. For the I most part, up. there's food left over, isn't there? There generally is. But that's also because a caterer always makes extra. Yeah. Just in case. If somebody drops something mm -hmm. or, you know, extra people show up or whatever. But The extra was going to be there anyway. I would think. Uh, I had one wedding that I did not show up after I RSVP'd, but I was ill. And this has been maybe 10 years ago. How and much I did they charge you? They didn't charge me. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, and you know what? If I'd have gotten that bill, I probably would have been like, uh, you've got to be kidding me. You understand that they're out the money, I guess. Yeah, but, it, which is unfortunate, but not on purpose. It's no. like, let's not go. It's a destination wedding, number one. Yeah, that one was a destination. So, so you've got to take into account, maybe some people won't be able to make it for one reason or another. Right. Uh, you know, the flight was canceled or a, an emergency monetary situation came up, you know, and they... They just couldn't afford it. But hopefully they called and said, I'm sorry this happened. But getting an invoice for your friends, that's a little rough. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Her name is Reed Drummond. Yeah, I know who that is. Pioneer woman. And uh, she has a couple of shows on the Food Network. Uh, well, and a movie. And a movie yeah. that is coming out. It's a Christmas movie. Uh -huh. Oh, how exciting. No, it's not on Hallmark. Discovery Plus wants to get into the Christmas music biz, yeah. so to say. So, D. Drummond? Re, Re Drummond. Re Drummond. Yeah. Yeah, it's I call be. her D. Re <laughs> Drummond. And it's going to be on just the uh, Discovery Plus platform, not right. on any of the cable networks. So, you have to have the app right. to watch it. Yeah. And then you know, you'll see her doing her cooking thing. Yeah, and she does play a bakery owner. Um, it's called Candy Coated Christmas. The lead character in the movie is called Molly McCook. I wish you could see Liz right now because she's rolling her eyes. Well, Why? The, it's just so cheesy. It's, not, oh, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> hey, all the Harmock ones are cheesy, but people and love they them. Are. They are. And I, I do love the Christmas Hallmark movies. See, okay. Some so of them. you'd love some this of one. Them. You'd some love, of them. You'd love this one. This one feels... Like they've thrown on an extra slice of cheese. Molly McCook. Yeah. Molly McCook. How about the name of the town? Name of the town's awesome. You ready for this? Yeah. Peppermint Hollow. 
Mmm, that's Christmas right there. Because that's a real place. Yeah, Peppermint I... Hollow, a real town. Because that's where her mom grew up, so she went back to where her mom grew up, and she's going to open up a bakery, but something happens. Uh, and and I'm sure everything's okay in the end, which I, is what I love about these Why movies. Why not? You need that feel good. But I mean, Molly McCook, like, I yeah. just can't get past that. Like, come on. <laughs> Peppermint Town. Come on. I'm even Isn't more on board with, with Peppermint Town or Peppermint Hollow or whatever. Oh, that's it. Peppermint Hollow. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm actually more on board with that. But Molly, and wait, my Southern comes out here. Molly McCook. <laughs> come on. Come, really? Come on. You'll like it. Give it a you try. You know what? I'm not saying that I won't because once you're in the spirit of Christmas, like, it's it's fine. It's, it's called good. candy-coated Christmas. I mean, come on. It's not like it's candy-coated or anything. Why is it getting worse to me? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. What's going on, Carol? I just happened to ponder. I had the radio on. It's the first thing I did when I got up this morning. I'm getting ready for work. And I walked in, into the radio. And I guess you were praying. And you mentioned about somebody that's praying with you. That's going through some things that's not physical. And that was me. Oh. And I want to thank you for being so in tune with God that that you obey his voice probably without even realizing it. Well, thank you. And I wanted to thank you. That That's one of the main reasons I love his radio, besides your encouraging. It makes my day during the day. The last song I, I hear is in my head all day at work. So whatever goes on at work that, you know, I, the song will bring me through whatever it is. But... I wanted to thank you for doing that because that prayer was for me. Oh, thank you, Carol. But God sees you today. I hope you know that. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. How innocent things are for our children. Mm -hmm. I mean, face it, you start getting older and then you start allowing compromise to come in. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, you're allowing other things to just get into your mind and come out of your mouth. And it's just like, why? Why? It's like, it's like... You're living life upside down, and what's right is wrong, and what's wrong is right. right. And you lose the innocence when you were a kid. Yeah. You know, the innocence of just going on a field trip and uh, having a good time. Love that. I was having a conversation with my son who just graduated high school, and, you know, he was talking about just transitioning into adulthood, and, and sometimes it can be a little a little scary, you know, because you have responsibility and you have bills and things like this. And so I was thinking about the things that I, I wish I had back when I was a kid, and that was going on, like, a field trip with your friends. Or one of the things I love about being a kid is that you could be friends with anybody we can as adults but sometimes things like you said get in your head oh and, yeah and you unfortunately either by choice or not um you aren't friends with everybody you make judgments and i hate that, that oh we do yeah that. that's I true hate it. um but as a kid man you can be friends with anybody eli's just, 13 yeah and he makes friends he, he does not meet a stranger and everybody's his friend he so just outgoing and gregarious. Like He's he great. Does. I love Eli. That's my son, by the way, yeah. if you don't know us too well. But one thing also that's fun that I remember as a kid, you would hear the little tinkling of the bells and man, you would run outside because you knew the ice cream truck was ice coming. Ice cream out. man's coming. <laughs> He's coming, mama. Give me a dollar. Coming down to satisfy. <laughs> 800-447-7234. Let's have a conversation about that. You know, those things that you miss when you were a kid. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Haley's here at 800-447-7234. What happened here, Haley? My daughter one time, she was about four. She got really upset. She quit praying one night. And I'm like, honey, what's wrong? And she's like, mommy, I just tooted in front of God during my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's a reason to be embarrassed. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. And if you are a Dew fan, you love Mountain Dew. And if you know somebody who loves Mountain Dew and you're not actually a fan, they might be into this, especially if they like the Flaming Hot Cheetos. Why? Because people like Flaming Hot Cheetos mm -hmm. and then a side of Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. You eat the Flaming Hot Cheetos, you drink your Mountain Dew. It's like heaven. I, it makes sense. You know? Those two things would go together in that way. Yeah. But now there is a Flaming Hot Cheeto Mountain Dew. Mmm. <sighs> wow. Oh. Wow. I Comes in even... a can. 
I can't even great. imagine. I so I think we taste tested like flaming hot mac and cheese because that that was a thing. I still smell it. It's still disgusting you in my nose. It? Every now and then it that just, was weeks ago. Oh, it's still like I the memory is still there of how just nasty that smells. So to take flaming hot Cheetos and mix it with a drink, Mountain Dew, flaming hot, yeah, is it like the Baja Blast. That's one. I don't even know that one. Yeah, that's one that my boys like. Is that a Mountain Dew? Yes. Okay. Oh, Mountain Dew has Code Red and Baja Blast and... Oh, my. I, I mean, like, they must have 40 different flavors. Well, then your sons would love this. I think they would get behind a lot of the flavors. I don't really... Luke Why not? loves really spicy food. Like oh, then... Really spicy... This, this is his. No, I don't You got think. the caffeine, you got the Mountain Dew, and the Flamin' Hot. Are there chunks of Cheetos in this drink? Like, how do they infuse the, okay, the taste? Okay, you just brought it to a whole weird level. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Hey, Brian's here at 800-447-7234. What's up there, Brian? Listen, when you talk about um, not do, they sell it at Walmart for like 5 and maybe $10. Oh, yeah, that flame and hot Cheeto Mountain Dew stuff. What about it? And when I saw it, I was like, hot maybe Doritos. There you go. See? Now you've got the best of both worlds, the Doritos the Cheetos, the Mountain Dew. There's another one coming out next year. Hot flaming um, milkshake. Chocolate, Cheetos, milk. and the hot flaming, and the, yeah, the dairy will help soothe. There you go. That's what it is. The milk will quell the spice. Why does it feel like to me we're going too far <laughs> with <laughs> the flaming hot Cheetos mashed up in all these beverages? They want to be in everything but i will say flaming hot cheetos is probably like their biggest seller i would think right yeah now. but to put it in a milkshake i mean anywhere you can put it that's extra money for cheetos i guess and now it's going in uh in the mountain dew i i guess maybe snickers bars are next who knows oh no no don't go there rob and liz his morning crew what in the world And Liz, his radio. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Who's coming out of the helicopter? What? Yes. That's Tom Cruise in our backyard, <laughs> in our garden, coming in this helicopter. Call Why? the kids. You know this actually happened, don't you? It did, didn't it? It did happen. So Tom Cruise, he's been in Europe for a while. He's filming the latest, what I don't even know, Mission Impossible 27. But he was on his way to film a scene and he had to land, and he couldn't find an airstrip. He couldn't find anywhere, so. Yeah, they were all full. Yeah, so he calls ahead, or has his team kind of call ahead to this family, and they said, we have an unidentified VIP that needs to land their helicopter in your garden. Is this okay? They said, absolutely, yes. They land, opens the door, jumps out, and it's Tom Cruise. Isn't that crazy? What? It was crazy. Now. He took a couple of pictures with the family, socially distanced. So the kids are kind of standing a couple of feet behind him, kind of spaced around. Mom and dad get their picture with Tom Cruise. He brings his mask down just long enough to get the picture. And then he takes off probably in a limousine or a motorcycle, or I don't know, because it is Tom Cruise. And then the kids, and I don't know if they asked or if he just said, hey, take the kids for a ride in the helicopter. Kids take a ride. And there they go. Bye, kids. Enjoy. Right? I love these movies. I, I I like Tom Cruise as a as a an, as actor. an actor. Oh, for sure. And so if he would have landed in like on our property, I would have been just starstruck. I really would have been. Robin Liz, his morning crew. The beach is closed. There are cows. Watch out, cows! Oh my goodness, they're angry. On the beach, the cows are here. Ew. Clear the beach. Watch where you're walking. The beach is closed. There are cows everywhere. <laughs> that one is so you can't. Cool. There's the cows. You gotta close the beach. <laughs> they did. They did. In France. Yeah, they did in France. Bunch of angry cows on the beach, and they closed it. Why are there cows on the beach? Evidently, it's a an island in France that this, ha or not in France, it's French-owned. Uh, and there's always cows that there's roam wild. There's 15,000 cows. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the Outer Banks, where there's yes. the wild horses. Right. 
kind of the same idea. And so during uh, the pandemic, the beach was closed during the pandemic. And then, you know, the cows got accustomed to, hey, now we can use the beach ourselves. They claimed the beach. And so because the cows are on the beach, they closed the beach. I mean, they were so happy that that people were gone like, and they were like I keep trying to reserve some chairs and umbrellas finally now I can get yeah, one yeah now these humans are in the way this is our beach that belongs one's to the cows that one's asking the friend to put the sunblock on yeah where's the past the copper tone <laughs> Where's the Yeti cooler? Now all the humans are showing up and they're like, do I smell hamburgers? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Maya always wanted to be a model. She was really successful at it. She's from Poland and she had probably spent a good part of her at least early years of life, you know, trying to be this model, this runway model. It takes years to learn that craft. It really, just the walk itself and, you know, trying to navigate those stiletto heels sometimes. My daughter used to do that in her latter teen years. Yeah. You know, some of the runway type of stuff. And it's an art to do that. Oh, sure. Well, that's exactly what this girl wanted to do, this young woman, I should say. But um, she decided to give it all up. She was at the height of her success and she said, you know what, there's bigger things in life. And so what she did is she went to Kenya and she started teaching some women there, some underprivileged women, um, to get them out of certain jobs and certain circumstances, um, to get them out of that lifestyle. She taught them how to sew and to kind of uh, make their own money to sew clothing, maybe curtains, furnishings, things like that. Um, And so what she does, she set up camp um, in Kenya and she is now holding classes and she teaches these young women how to take care of themselves by sewing. Well, that is so great. I mean that she took this successful career and said, there's more to life than my success. Mm -hmm. I need to take the things that I've learned and that I can invest in somebody else and help them better their life and change their stars. I'm going to guess that these women were being used. Yes. And that's how they were making their exactly. living. Oh, exactly. I'm so grateful she did what she did right. to help them. Right. Get them out of that environment. Teach them a vocation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Love her and love that she saw that need and she filled it.